three, two, one. There's something satisfying about using compressed air as a power source, whether it's for powering full-size bikes, radio-controlled aircraft, or self-destructing helicopters. But one area I haven't fully explored is the use of compressed air turbines. This video is sponsored by Onshape. More on them later. Before building some turbines, we need a method of measuring their performance. So I'm going to build an inertia dynamometer. To do this, I bought a steel disc from eBay and drilled a hole in the center, which allows it to be mounted to a shoulder bolt that will act as a shaft for it to spin on. Well, more spin with as I glued the shaft to the disc so it can be spun by the turbine. Then just a few coats of paint to prevent the mild steel from rusting before building the test mount that it will spin on. It just needs balancing before being spun up to several thousand RPM, which can be done by removing some weight from the heavier side by drilling some small holes. An inertia dyno works by attaching a test device, in this case a turbine, to a heavy flywheel and accelerating it up to speed. And by measuring the acceleration of the wheel, we should be able to determine the turbine's torque and power output. But first, we need to measure the RPM of the wheel. I initially chose to use this infrared sensor, which outputs a high or low signal as the lines on the disc pass by, which is the same way that these commercial tachometers measure RPM. The problem with this system is it counts the number of lines that pass by the sensor in a given time period. For example, how many lines pass by in one second. And the longer this time period, the more accurate the reading. Now this is fine for measuring a constant RPM of say, an electric motor, but because we want to measure the acceleration of a turbine, we need to be able to measure its speed several times per second, and this system just isn't accurate enough. Also with the wheel being directly driven by the turbine, it might be a little dangerous having this thing spinning at potentially 20,000 RPM. So I scrapped this design and built another inertia dyno with a magnetic encoder that gives really accurate angular position and RPM measurements as well as a gear ratio so the turbine can spin much faster whilst keeping the flywheel at a safe speed. I then 3D printed a test turbine on my Formlabs Form 3 resin printer, as it's capable of high precision parts like these small turbine blades, as well as a small diameter nozzle to direct the air through the turbine. This test was run at 60 psi using a large compressed air tank, and the turbine reached a speed of just over 18,000 RPM, which using the encoded data can be plotted on a graph like this. Now, the more torque the turbine produces, the faster the wheel will accelerate. So at low RPM, the gradient is steep, which indicates high torque, and then at higher RPM, it starts to flatten out, indicating lower torque. And we can plot this as a torque versus RPM graph, which reveals an almost perfect straight line as the torque reduces whilst the RPM increases. Which makes sense as the torque produced is a result of the air hitting the blades. So as the blades spin faster, the speed difference between the air and the blades reduces. This might seem like the turbine performs best at low RPM as this is when the max torque is produced. But this is when we need to calculate the output power of the turbine, which is a result of both the torque and the RPM. So by plugging the values into this equation, we can plot a power versus RPM graph, which gives us far more information on the optimal range for this turbine, with a peak output of about 11 watts at just under 10,000 RPM. Now this turbine design isn't anything new, as I used a similar design when I tried to build a compressed air powered helicopter a few years ago. But from my previous tests, it performed really well in terms of thrust produced and also ease of build, because it doesn't require any tight tolerances between moving parts. But for a while now, I've been wanting to try a turbine known as a vane motor. This turbine uses a wheel that spins within an offset housing and has a number of freely moving vanes around its circumference, which are forced outwards as the turbine spins. So as high pressure enters through the top left, it pushes on the blades and gradually expands as it travels around the turbine. This is the same turbine that's used in many pneumatic tools, and it was also used by a fellow YouTuber, Works by Design, where he powered an ornithopter with one. Whoa. I highly recommend you go check out his video as it's an awesome project. But unfortunately, I couldn't get mine to work nearly as well. 
I mean, it worked, but the friction between the parts, combined with the lack of airtight seals, made it incredibly inefficient. I then thought I should test a commercial pneumatic drill, as this also uses a vane motor and should be a more perfected design. And it sounds awesome. But it does drain my air tank very fast. This is at real time speed with a 24 litre compressed air tank. With it mounted to the inertia dyno, it produces lots of torque at much lower RPM than the 3D printed turbine. But this makes sense with the amount of air it's draining. So let's compare the efficiency of both turbines by running them off a fixed volume of a 2 litre drinks bottle at 80 psi. The 3D printed turbine runs for about 20 seconds and produces a peak power output of 7 watts with a maximum speed of 8300 rpm. And the pneumatic drill... Well, it drains the bottle almost instantly. I then wanted to try some different blade profiles on the original turbine, so I printed a few to test. This is the original design with these basic C-shaped blades, which will act as the control, and at 60 psi it had a max power output of 11 watts. I then printed this design where the trailing edge of the blade is concentric with the radius of the following blade, creating a constant width channel for the air to flow through, which performs significantly better with a max power of 12 watts, but a much higher max speed of 19,400 rpm. And finally, this turbine design, which is similar to an aircraft wing, but it's not a specific aerofoil profile. It was just inspired by these blades I saw whilst researching gas turbines, and thought it was worth testing. This produced a max power of just under 13 watts, but interestingly it had the same maximum RPM of the second turbine. I also reran these tests, but instead of the constant 60 psi from my large air tank, I used a 2 litre drinks bottle pressurised to 80 psi, as this will be the air storage configuration that will be used later in the project. And with this test, the second turbine performed the best. So either the second turbine reaches a higher output power before the pressure in the bottle reduces, or it prefers the higher pressure of 80 psi. Either way, the results are very close, so I don't think it will make a huge difference at this stage. I also threw in one more design which popped into my head the other day, which has these channels to guide the air down towards the centre of the turbine in the hope that it would capture more momentum from the air. But with a max output of just over 4 watts, we'll choose to ignore that design. So until I find some more efficient turbine designs to test, let's apply this data to something that will produce more than just a high pitched screech. Well, it might also produce a high pitched screech. I started by printing a chassis that will house the turbine, because who wouldn't want a radio controlled turbine car? And in order to make it radio controlled, I also printed a valve that will act as a throttle, where this small tapered piece should vary the airflow to the turbine. And with this mounted in the chassis, I can attach a servo to hopefully control it remotely. Then I attached a small length of tubing to join the throttle to the turbine nozzle, that will direct the air into the turbine. This turbine design is almost identical to the ones tested earlier, but it has a gear to drive the rear wheels. Only issue is I think I broke this bearing whilst pressing it into the hub, so I'll need to change the design later, but at least it mounts in the chassis okay and aligns well with the nozzle. I then attached a mount to hold a drinks bottle as the pressure chamber, which can be plumbed into the throttle with some flexible tubing, as well as a one-way valve for filling the bottle with compressed air using a bike pump. So I've just printed a new turbine, uh, this time it's printed out of half resin and half PLA FDM print. Uh, this way I could press fit the bearing a bit easier and I can also change the gear if I need to at a later date. Uh, and what we can do is press in this little hose, which is the same uh, connector type as my previous air power plane, and pump up the bottle. So I've just filled the bottle up to 50 psi. Uh, I can hear a small leak, but it's not too bad. If I just turn this twist cap, and pull it out. So now the whole system's pressurized and I should be able to throttle up and the turbine should spin. Whoa. 
That is so cool. The next step is to add some wheels, which I chose to use these ridiculous looking dragster tyres that will hopefully handle the full 11 watts of turbine power. With these attached to the rear axle and a gear ratio that should hit max power at around 15 miles per hour, the rear end of the car is now complete. And it's time to build the front end of the chassis. To keep the weight low, I decided to use two carbon fibre spars to mount the front chassis, and the bottle should sit on top of the spars nicely. So once the front chassis is clamped in position, it's time to attach the steering and some slightly smaller wheels. To be honest, these wheels would probably have enough grip to be the rear wheels too, but those dragster tyres weren't cheap, so I'm sticking with it. Then both the front steering pivots can be joined with a steering bar that will create the necessary steering geometry. And last but not least, some messy electronics mounting, which I'm not proud of, but this is a prototype, so why make it neat? God, we've got a lot of pumping to do today. Unplug the hose and see if it drives. It doesn't go very far, but let's try it at high pressure in a straight line. That's not coming back. Whilst the range of this car isn't great, the turbine isn't fully to blame. With nearly 34% of the car's total weight being in the rear wheels, there's a lot of rotational mass to accelerate, acting almost as an inertia dyno itself. Having said that, this turbine still has a long way to go before it outperforms the efficiency of my previous air engines. But now that I have the inertia dynamometer, it will be a lot easier to develop and test new designs like multi-stage turbines with multiple rotors and stators, like full-size industrial gas turbines use. Or if any of you watching have some turbine ideas to try, maybe try hopping into Onshape to turn your ideas into 3D models. Onshape is a professional 3D CAD system that was built entirely in the cloud and works in a web browser, which sets it apart from traditional CAD systems as it never crashes, and every single action you make is recorded, so you can always revert back to changes you made if a design doesn't quite work. Also, being able to collaborate on designs is a very important part of creating a project, and Onshape allows you to share designs in real time with others. Or a project can be split into a GitHub-inspired method of branching and merging, so if someone has an idea to make alterations, they can create their own branch and work on their idea without disrupting the main design. You've probably seen me use my Formlabs resin printer in many of my videos. And Formlabs has just announced their new Form 4 printer, which was actually fully designed in Onshape. So if you're an engineer, product designer, or just want to turn your idea into a part, Onshape are now offering up to six months of their professional version for free. So I highly recommend you go check out Onshape at onshape.pro forward slash Tom Stanton. The link will be in the video description. Thank you very much for watching. One last thing, I'll be at open source this year in San Francisco between June 14th and 16th. Last year was an absolutely amazing event and this year is going to be even better with so many YouTube creators and so many exhibits and everyone bringing all their cool inventions and just having a great time. So if you haven't got your tickets yet, I highly recommend you buy some and I'll hopefully see you in San Francisco very soon. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.